Welcome to a new episode of A Guide to Lotro. In today's episode, we talk about Angmar. A place of evil magic and terror. A wasteland which is torn by war and corruption. And full of fortresses of the darkness. The place of giant creatures like, well, giants. Or giant dragons. Giant spiders. Giant orcs. Giant turtles. Everything way too big for a small hobbit like me. Angmar is a part of Eriador. It is located in the northeastern corner. In the last episodes about Evendim, Northdance and Forokkel, we talked a lot about the Kingdom of Arnor and its fall into Artedain, Cardolan and Wudor. Today we shift our focus onto the other side of the war in Eriador. This war took place in the early to late Third Age. Today we talk about Angmar. We already know that Angmar was the realm and kingdom of the Witch King. The Witch King was the greatest captain of Sauron and during this time meant to be defeated in the Battle of the Last Alliance. Why did the Witch King even have such an interest in taking over Eriador? Today we're gonna answer those questions. For that, let us jump back in time to the place of the Battle of the Last Alliance. The Battle of the Last Alliance was the epic conclusion of war between mainly the men, elves in Middle-earth against Sauron from Mordor. I don't want to dig too deep into the reason for that war. All you need to know for now is that by the hand of Isildur, Sauron got defeated in the Battle of the Last Alliance. Sauron was defeated, but not dead. Since his power was bound to the One Ring, he had time to regenerate and plan his next step in the war the men thought to have won. It took a while for Sauron to regain some strength. We are speaking here of around 1100 years. In around 1100 of the Third Age, Sauron regained strength, gathered his most powerful servants like the Ringwraiths and established Tol Guldur, a dark fortress in the hidden Mirkwood. During this time, Gondor and Arnor were already split into two independent kingdoms. Arnor was even divided into Artedain, Cardolan and Rudor. Sauron commanded the Witch King to destroy Arnor, since he saw a chance in the already strongly divided kingdom of the Dúnedain in Arnor. The Witch King would gather forces, travel over the Misty Mountain into the land of what we call today Angmar, which is Sindarin for Home of Iron. The Witch King became the ruler of Angmar and built a mighty fortress called Karndum. His only purpose and goal was to destroy the men in Eriador. Angmar was turned into a dark place, inhabited by orcs, troll breeds and hillmen. Those hillmen would belong to the Kingdom of Rudor, which sided, together with Angmar against Artedain and Cardolan. They would practice occultism and hail the Witch King as their new god. During this war, the rise of Sauron was kept a secret and the men of Arnor did not know that the Witch King was in fact one of the Nazgul or even their lord. The war against Artedain and Cardolan was long and used up many resources on both sides. The Great Plague, a pandemic of an unknown disease, gave the Witch King the momentum to destroy Cardolan completely. These battles would cost the Witch King many of his armies as well, to the point where the last remaining forces of Artedain forced him to fall back to Karndum. The war would go on but in a slower pace, since both sides were at a point where they lost too many of their forces. With Cardolan defeated, Artedain would also remain on their own. 
While the Great Plague would cost many human lives, the Witch King was waiting in Karnum, multiplying his armies of orcs and trolls. In order to gain time, he sent Barrowwick's powerful undeads into the land of the fallen kingdom Cordolan. In the 19th century, the Witch King saw his chance. Artedine was almost defeated, all the forces gathered in Fornost with the lost King Arvadai calling for help in Gondor. The Witch King launched a final attack against Fornost. Fornost literally got overrun by the numbers of orcs and trolls from Angmar. Arvadai, the lost King of Artedine, gathered powerful relics of the men of Arnor like the Palantiri and fled to Forokkal where he unfortunately lost his life in the Sea of Forot. In the game this tragedy happened due to a snowstorm that the Witch King summoned while Arvadai was fleeing on a ship of Círdan to the elves in Lindon. The Witch King became the King of Eriador, with a few remaining elves and surviving Dúnedain, which now were rangers, resisting his presence. His reign would not last long. The Gondorian forces, led by Prince Arnor of Gondor, would defeat the Witch King in Fornos. They had help from the Elves of Lindon, Rangers of Eriador and even Hobbits. The Witch King got pushed back to Karnum, chased by a cavalry of Earnor and Glorfindel. The Gondorian Prince took all of his courage to defeat the Witch King in a one-on-one fight. Just when the Gondorian Prince wanted to ride towards the Witch King, his horse panicked due to the darkness of the Witch King. The Witch King laughed and rode away, leaving Angmar behind. The Gondorian Prince was raging and in anger. The elf Glorfindel would calm him down. He would calm him down with the words, Not by the hand of man shall the Witch King fall. Angmar was defeated, but so were the men of Eriador. Arnor was destroyed, and the remaining men were scattered around as rangers. The goal of the Witch King was achieved. Let's talk about the landscape of Angmar in-game. For this I want to start in Ramduaf. Ramduaf is a path and valley which is connected to the North Downs. In Ramduaf you can find the encampment Orkair, which is an encampment of friendly hillmen. To the south of Aukair, there is Le Makoti, a Earth King encampment. Ramduaf has many enemy encampments. One is the Orc encampment called Skatmur. The Angmarim and Hillman encampment called Threfwail. and a cave full of Borobol called Duvair. In general, Ramduaf is a very deep valley full of spiders, orcs and other creatures. To the north of Ramduaf there is Fesach, Laran and Falvoid. Here we find a lot of Angmarim and Hillman encampments. Here we have for example Tor Galvin. To the north of it Donvale. and Doom Kovat, which lies west of Donvale. Malenhut is a swamp area in the center of Angmar. In this wasteland you can find goblins, worms and even giant turtles. Bale Rova is an encampment of Angmarim.
or Bale Bogluck, which is found in the northern part of Mullenhut. There's also a small NPC encampment. And probably one of the more famous places called Solgate, which is a place full of worms. Here people used to farm worms a lot for certain deeds and trades. If you go more to the east, there is Gorofflat. Notably is the dwarven encampment called Gabil Shatur. It is said that the dwarves used to live in Angmar before the Witch King of Angmar arrived. Gabil Shatur is eventually a refuge for all the dwarves that got pushed away from the Witch King of Angmar. The place Methot is an arena where Angmar breeds their trolls. They would let them fight in one on ones to determine who is the strongest. You will also find the ruins of Cruz Lanen, where you can discover the secret of the Seven Swords. To the north of Goroflat there is Nangurf. Nangurf is a valley with almost no vegetation. The most important place is the fortress Parat Gularan. Barant Gularan is a tower which is surrounded by seven smaller towers. Each one of those smaller towers has a different type of enemy encampment. To the east of Nangurf there is Imlat Palhorf. This is the place where Barrowwicks and Undeads are created. Here the Angmarims bind evil spirits to their will. At the doorsteps of Karndum there is Himbar. Here we find encampments of Angmarims and even a cave full of spiders. Gafortnir is found at the edge of Himbar, a friendly NPC encampment. There is a spider cave called Torech i Bokberech. Here you find the raid boss Bokberech, a huge spider. In order to get to Karndum, you have to pass through the Iron Gate in Runendin. Of course, you also have Karndum, which is the evil fortress of the Witch King of Angmar. The Witch King got pushed out of Angmar a few hundred years ago, so he is not the ruler of Karndum anymore. In the story of the game, you will find someone else who is now ruling this place. This is something you will need to discover for yourself, since I don't want to spoil this story here. Last but not least is the Rift of Nurskaju. This is the place for the entrance of the 12th man dungeon rift of Nurskaju. There is also a Yorelens camp where you can trade loot from the dungeon and the raid. There is a bunch of interesting deeds to do in Angmar. There is the deed called the Seven Swords. For this you have to find and kill seven hillman captains found around in Goroflat. You can spot those hillman captains easily, they are usually sitting at the campfire. If you have found all the seven swords, go to the ranger Nefra. He will give you a final group quest where you can finish the deed. For the deed Hidden Threats in Angmar, you have to defeat two raid bosses which are found in Angmar. One is the spider Bokberef found here. 
To spawn Bogbereth, you have to kill enough of those small spider broodlings. Keep in mind that Bogbereth is considered a raid boss, so better come in a raid or at high level. The final and last boss is Frendor, which is a necromancer found in Imlat Palhor. To spawn Frendor, you have to defeat all of those spirits on that island that I show here right now. Frendor and those spirit adds are considered raid content, so either come with a raid or be high level. Of course, we also have the Slayer Deeds. For the Undead Slayer, you want to go to Imlat Palhor. For the Worm Slayer, go to Selgate, which is west of Gabil Shatur. For Trolls, Uruks and Goblins, you want to grind the Urugarf dungeon. There is even Warps. For works, you want to go specifically to Bazakh Laran. There isn't a specific camp here with works. All you can do is roam around and kill every work that you can find. For Angmarims, you can go to Karndum, either grind the dungeon or the gate of Karndum. In Angmar, you can find a bunch of dungeons and raids. One of them is Urugarf. The entrance is found deep within Karndum. This is where Angmar breeds their armies, so you can expect a lot of orcs, trolls and Uruks. Of course, one of the dungeon is Karndum itself. My goal is not to spoil what happens in those dungeons, since this is something that the viewer has to explore for themselves. But you will find a lot of dark and evil creatures inside this dungeon. Another six-man dungeon is Barat Gularan. This is a place of evil magic. The final dungeon is a 12-man raid, which is called the Rift of Nurs Garu. The entrance to this raid is found below the camp of Yorelen. The raid itself has a lot of strong bosses and an end boss which will surprise you. The reputation you can find in Angmar is called the Council of the North and the traders are found in Garfornir. Here you can see the reputation items that you can farm and how much reputation they give you. You can get two mount skins for this reputation. One is called the Prized Angmar's Free People's Stead. The second one is called the Prized Ashen Steed. We have reached the end of this episode about Angmar. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to see more, leave a like and a subscription if you want. If you enjoy live streaming, you can also check out my Twitch channel. I usually stream some high tier dungeon with my warden. Thanks for watching and I see you in a next episode about the Lone Lands.